one minute. So I have already introduced to you about uh, uh, Margaret Atwood, right? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Just give me one minute, I believe. Okay. So, talking about uh, Margaret Atwood, Margaret Atwood is a very uh, known, uh, uh, you know, Canadian uh, uh, writer, and uh, she was born. On November 18, uh, uh, just a bit. Yeah, hello. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry, I'm getting uh, disconnected. Okay. Today, actually, I have a little problem with my internet, so I, I might get disconnected in between. Uh, okay. So, yes, as you were telling, Mar Margaret Atwood was born on uh, November 18, 1939 in Ottawa, Ontario, uh, to parents of uh, Nova Scotian origin. And uh, when she was 11, sorry, when she was seven, her family moved to Toronto, but, you know, continued to spend the warmer months in the remote uh, northern areas of Ontario and uh, Quebec, where her father was an entomologist and a zoology professor studied, you know, tree-eating uh, insects. And uh, Artwood fascination was with the Canadian wilderness, which uh, is, you know, present in uh, so much of her writings. Uh, uh, dates from uh, this period. So she was eleven before she attended school on a full-time basis. So she received her bachelor's. Uh, degree from 
Victoria College, part of the University of Toronto in 1961. And upon the uh, recommendation of her mentor, Fire, she decided to pursue a graduate degree, uh, which, uh, you know, we joined uh, Harvard University while uh, Artwood was studying there. And at that time, Harvard uh, was, you know, starchy and um, ultra conservative. And Artwood's experience as a graduate student helped, you know, shape her feminist views and opposition to the Americanization of uh, Canadian literature. And in 1962, she earned her master's degree and although you know she stayed at harvard intermittently over the next several years she left the program before completing her phd and by 1967 she was already you know she has become a, a famous uh, writer so while studying in boston she published you know her first collection of poetry the Circle Game in uh, 1966, which was awarded with the prestigious Governor uh, General's Award. And in 1969, she published her first novel, The Edible Woman, and, you know, Eddie Steyer about a young woman working in a marketing firm. And over the next few years, she continued, you know, to alternate between prose, poetry and prose, often publishing one work in each genre in the alternative, you know, in the same uh, year. But you find in 1972, uh, uh, she published a critical work called Survival, a thematic guide to Canadian literature, which, you know, greatly influenced the ways Canadians uh, you know, understand the literary traditions and still, you know, taught in many Canadian schools, you know, survival, advanced uh, and, 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 and environmental interpretation of Canadian literature. Uh, it portrayed, you know, Canadian writers as victims, still, which is imprisoned by a colonial uh, dependency and caught between, you know, the America to the south and the vast wilderness of the, uh, to the north. So that uh, same, you know, year, Atwood published a second novel, Surfacing, in which the protagonist was to escape to the northern uh, wilderness before rejoining society. So after two, you know, broken off engagements and five years marriage to an American, Jim Paul, Atwood, you know, settled down with a Canadian writer, Gibson, in 1973. After several years of being, you know, professionally involved with the Toronto-based uh, publishing house, House of, uh, you know, Anansi Press, as well as uh, intermittent, you know, teaching engagement, she and Egyptian brought, you know, a farmhouse outside Alliston, Ontario, where they lived, you know, of and on the of many years in and 1976 uh, the year she published her third novel lady oracle artwood gave birth to a daughter and the daughter name is jess artwood Gibson. so over the next few years she dabbled in television screen uh, writing produced a history uh, book called uh, Days of the Rebels in 1815 to 1840, uh, which was published in 1977, and published a collection of short stories, Dancing Girls, in 1977. So following more or less temporary, you know, uh, residencies in Vancouver, um, um, in Edinburgh, London, and uh, uh, the south of France, Atwood and her family settled, you know, um, in Toronto on a permanent basis in 1981. And the previous year, Atwood had become you know, the vice chairperson, chairperson of the Writers uh, Union of Canada, a position which is perfectly suited to her 
interest in uh, Canadian uh, nationalism, which, uh, you know, her years in the uh, United States, as well as her uh, you know, commitment to publish Canadian writers uh, through um, NNC, uh, which had, uh, you know, strengthened. Uh, Atwood, uh, you know, explored the theme of Canadian identity with, uh, you know, uh, varying levels. <laughs> varying levels, and uh, you find that um, uh, the explicitness in many of her works you find committed for the forging of Canadian literature. Atwood has, has cited fellow Canadian poets of her generation, including, uh, you know, Michael uh, Ondaatje and Al Prudy uh, as the strongest influence on her poetry. So uh, more than 20 years after publishing Survival, Atwood expanded on the subject in strange things the ma uh, uh, the male volant north in canadian literature which was published in 1995 are you all getting me hello yes sir yeah. and then internationally uh, you find that what is celebrated uh, for the blunt feminism of her books so from her first novel, The Edible Woman, to her, you know, dystopian masterpiece, The Handmaid's Tale, in, which was published in 1985, the book, you know, that sealed her uh, international fame. Uh, just a minute, just a minute. Okay, uh, actually there's some problem with the connection today. Uh, there's no uh, current, so that is why the problem uh, is arising. Yeah, okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I told you about the Handmaid's Tale, which Atwood, you know, refuses uh, to label as science fiction, which depicts a society in which Women are shown, you know, of all rights except uh, the right to marry, you know, keep house and reproduce. So you find after the Handmaid's uh, Tale made, uh, you know, Atwood a major international celebrity, 
she you know wrote a series of novel dealing with the women's relationship with one another and including you know cat's eye which was published in 1988 and the robber's bride in 1993 uh, but you find in 1992, she published uh, Good Bones, you know, short, witty pieces about female body parts and the constraints, you know, that have been uh, placed on them throughout history. And Artwood explores women's, you know, historical roles in other works, so including, you know, her renowned poetry uh, collection and the journals of uh, Susanna Modi in 1970 and her you know, novel uh, Alias Grace in 1996. So both reimagine the lives of famous pioneer women in Canadian history. And you find today Artwood is one of the best known living writers in the world. And Artwood work uh, you know, has been published in more than 25 countries and uh, she has received a number of uh, prestigious awards also for her writing, including the Brook Booker's Prize, um, a Molson Award, and a Canadian Short Fiction Award also. Recently, she got the Booker's. Uh, uh, if you have, uh, if you have explored, uh, she recently got the Booker's Prize. Okay, am I clear? Yes, sir. Sir, your voice is a little bit low today. Could you please? Uh... Because the internet connection is not good today. There's no current actually today. Okay, and my my backup is all already over. I don't know which time my phone will also shut down. And uh... okay, sir. Okay. So coming to surfacing, surfacing by Margaret Atwood. Okay, so I'll tell you uh, the, you know, characters first. So surfacing by, um, I will tell you um, the minor and the major characters first. So talking about the narrator, the unnamed protagonist of surfacing is the narrator. The name has not been given, and the narrator is a, a, a you know reverential towards nature, so intensely uh, private and anti-American and and, uh, and uh, introspective, and she works you know for, as a freelance artist. So she searches for her missing father on a remote island in Quebec, along uh, with her boyfriend Joe and her friends. So David and Anna, socially, you know, alienated and distrustful of love, the narrator, you know, suffers a, a debilitating emotional numbness that uh, eventually fixes itself through a grand psychological transformation. And she eventually, you know, goes mad on the island. So for a time, she lives, is like an animal, but she eventually, you know, emerges as a, a more, you know, enlightened being. So surfacing is composed entirely of the narrator's unfiltered thoughts and observations. Okay. So then we have the next, um, you know, uh, character is Joe. Joe is the quiet, you know, shy, well. A meaning boyfriend of the narrator, and Joe is an unsuccessful artist who makes ugly pottery and teaches pottery classes. 
but Joe remains, you know, too simple-minded to understand the narrator's complexities. So he insists on marrying the narrator, which, uh, you know, she resists. And Joe is a good, you know, man, but he is also uh, potentially very violent. Then we have David. David is the psychologically abusive and womanizing husband of Anna. And David is a, uh, is a communication teacher who loves uh, baseball. And um, he is uh, also, you find, um, he's a filmmaker, okay, composing a film with Joe called Random Samples. So David's, you know, uh, constant joking and imitation of carbon, uh, you know, uh, sorry, cartoon, uh, you know, characters serve as a poor cover for uh, his selfish and sexist behavior and the manner in which, you know, he communicates with Anna in his deeply, you know, cruel. And David is, you know, staunchly anti-American. Yet uh, he possesses all the awful qualities that the narrator associates with the Americans. Then we have the um, Anna. Anna is the vulnerable yet very sly, you know, wife of David. And Anna puts a wiener of sweetness in order to please her husband. So she constantly, you know, sings and applies uh, makeup, and she believes her marriage is a war that uh, she fights using her body and Anna uses sex with her husband and other men to curve David's behavior. So she's more, you know, talkative and social than the narrator. But you find that far less, far less, it is introspective of self-aware. Then we have Paul. Paul is the compassionate yet, you know, very reserved best friend of the narrator's father. And Paul is the first one to, you know, inform the narrator of her uh, father's uh, disappearance. So he's a poor man who lives, you know, a modest life and he operates by traditional morals and codes of. Uh, courtesy and provides as much help as he can in locating, you know, the narrator's uh, father. So Paul was the model of the simple life to the narrator's father. Um, through the narrator, though the, you find the narrator, you know, observes that he is a model through financial necessity and not by choice. Then we have the narrator's mother. Narrator's mother is an aloof, uh, aloof and a secretive woman. And the narrator's mother died uh, you know, from a brain tumor before uh, the novel begins. So you find the narrator constantly you know, tries to remember her. Her uh, mother you know, serves as a narrator's image of uh, inner strength. And the narrator continually remembers the image of her mother in a leather jacket feeding blue jays. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, uh, if you had any PDF regarding uh, these uh, characters, uh, could you please provide us in the group? No, I don't have any PDF exactly. Uh, sir, uh, I'm just asking about the uh, characters like Anna, David, Joe. Uh, these characters, uh, how they are interlinked, but, uh, that's only I want to know. That is what I'm telling, no? Yes, sir. Now you are telling, but uh, if you have uh, any material regarding this character, uh, could you please uh, kind enough to no, share? I, I, uh, I don't have uh, about the characters, I don't have. Um, I'll, I'll see, I'll search. I don't think, you know, because Canadian literature materials you don't generally get. Yes, sir. It's very good. Yeah. But I think uh, in the in the textbook, I think it is given. Uh, yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Uh, I am able to find out the um, that about Anna, Jo, uh, David, yeah. Yeah, David, Paul. Okay. So, uh, why, when I'm telling, why don't you note it down? When, when means uh, just write it in brief so that you can, you know, expand it. Sir, sir, is it possible that you just uh, give a short brief about the character Anna, Jo? I, I will note it down right now. Uh, okay, I'm t I'm I'm going to tell about the narrator's father now. Okay, so you find the narrator's father uh, was a very stern uh, man who uh, disappears, you know, forcing the narrator to search for him on uh, his island. So you find the narrator's father is an uh, you know uh, atheist and a, very f a fan of the 18th century rationalists. So self-reliant and very rugged, you know, he built the cabin uh, on his uh, own and uh, had, you know, used the island as a respite from city life. And he dies, you know, accidentally on a trip researching local uh, Indian wall paintings. Then we have the next character. The next character is the narrator's brother. The next character uh, here, a character who never, you know, uh, appears in person. And the narrator's brother fled from his parents. Okay. Uh, years before the novel takes place. And the narrator finds it very difficult to imagine him on an adult. So he nearly, you know, uh, drowned as a child. And then the narrator constantly reflects on the image of his drowning. And he was, you know, loving, you know, towards his sister. So, but you find he had a rather dark childhood. He kept a, a laboratory on the uh, on the island, running experiments on uh, animals in the jars. Then we have the uh, fake husband. The fake husband is uh, the narrator's ex-lover. And um, the fake husband is eventually, you know, revealed uh, to be the narrator's art, well, you know, Professor a married man with whom she had an affair. And uh, he forced, you know, the narrator into uh, having an abortion. So he is emotionally callous in nature, but you find tries to avoid, you know, letting his affair with the narrator influence his actions. Clear? Okay, the so next is um, Bill um, um, Malmstrom. Bill Malmstrom is a shady and a, you know wealthy American whom the narrator immediately you know disrupt, distrusts. And Malmstrom claims, you know, to be a, a representative of a, a deteriorate-based wildlife preservation agency. And he offers, you know, uh, to purchase you know, the narrator's father's island. So David, you know, suspects that, um, you know, Malmstrom is an undercover CIA operative. Then the next character, we have is the Americans. The Americans are the two Canadian uh, campers who, uh, whom the narrator initially mistakes, you know, for American tourists. And they are very avid fishers, and they, uh, you know, they befriend David, and uh, uh, they also, you know, are responsible for killing and hanging the herons and the, and for their, you know, senseless violence. The narrator 
uh, believes them to be Americans. Then we have Claude. Claude is a young boy working at a generic bar, attached to the new uh, model in the village. And Claude gives you know fishing licenses to uh, David and the other tourists, and also you know guides American tourists on fishing uh, expedition. And uh, he speaks on a, a yokel dialect. Okay. Then we have. Evans. Evans is uh, the seasoned American guide who uh, takes, you know, the narrator, um, Joe, uh, Anna, and David to the um, and and from the narrator's father's island. And Evans is gruff and, and you know minds his own business, and he is aware that the narrator father has uh, you know disappeared, but he never asks the narrator about it. Yeah. And then uh, we have Madame. Madame is uh, Paul's wife. Madame is a French woman living in a, uh, you know village close to the narrator's father island. But it's a very, you know, simple kind of a guy, a person and uh, polite. She speaks, you know, only French. And because they only, you know, speak English, the narrator and the narrator's mother both experience, you know, long, awkward conversation with Madam. Then we have the town priest, the local priest, you know, whom the narrator remembers from childhood. The, Town priest, you know, for big. It women in you know, the narrator's village uh, from wearing stacks, and instead he forced them to wear. Is likely, you know, dead by now. Then we have. The old shopkeeper. Okay. The old shopkeeper and the new shopkeeper. The old shopkeeper is one armed French woman whom the narrator you know, remembers simply as Max. And uh, the old. Uh, which is attached to her house. And the narrator remembers how the shopkeeper, you know, used to tie, you know, packages with her uh, stump, uh, you know, arm and how she used to sell uh, candies uh, that the narrator was, uh, you know, never allowed to buy. And then we have the new shopkeeper. The new shopkeeper is the French woman who works in a small village near the narrator's father's island so the new shopkeeper is a very rude you know night woman uh, who humiliates the narrator for speaking you know um, broken uh, french so the shopkeeper you know wears slacks and which would you know have been forbidden in the village years ago so this is all about the uh, characters. Am I clear to all of you? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, at the end you said that new shopkeeper was the lady, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, so what do we see? What are the themes that Atwood has, you know, reflected? So Atwood has tried to show language as a connection to society. Through, out you see the novel surfacing the narrator's feeling of powerlessness is coupled with an, you know, inability to use language. Where you know she goes mad and she cannot, you know, understand. Uh, David's, you know, words or you know, speak out against his advances. Similarly, you find when the search uh, 
Patti, you know, comes to comes for her. She cannot, you know, understand her speeches, and her only defense from them is, uh, you know, flight, words which betray her, as it is, you know, by yelling that the search party discovers her. Okay. So the narrator maintains the, the false um, hope that uh, she can re reject human language just as she imagines and she can reject human society. So she admires how animals know the type of plants without naming them. And what you know, she uh, when she goes mad, she ooze not to teach her children or child about about. Yet eventually, she conquers her alienation by embracing the language. Okay, then we have the total alienation of women. You find Atwood uses the narrator's uh, near constant feeling of alienation to comment on the alienation of all women. So you find the narrator, you know, feels abandoned by her parents you know, because of the disappearance of her father and the detachment of her mother. And you find she finds, you know, men especially alienating because of the ways they control women through religion, through marriage, birth control, sex, language, and even birth. So she depicts the way, you know, that men view relationships as a far with women as spoils. And the narrator also describes her alienation as systematic, highlighting, you know, the ways the children learn gender roles early on in life. And the result of the narrator's alienation is madness and complete withdrawal. So the narrator, uh, you know, remains unnamed, you know, making her a universal figure and suggesting that all women are in some way alienated. Clear? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, you mean to say that the theme is about, uh, it is showing the gender conflict, uh, conflict between, um, within the society in the early period? What? Hello, sir. Sir, uh, 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 Margaret actually so wanted to show uh, in his, uh, this novel, the theme that you said that language and the connection to the society. But uh, here it is also showing that role of the gender role in early period, where, uh, at what time that male was actually uh, behaved like a dominant, dominated person? Uh, yeah, what did you, uh, just a minute, give me one minute, one minute. Hello, sir, we can't hear you at all. Okay. 
Well, just yes, just a minute. My, uh, you know, this. Uh, I'm changing the connection. Just hold on for a minute. Sure, sir. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm having a lot of trouble today with the electricity. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Supriya, yes. Your question, please. Once again, what what were you asking? Um, uh, sir. Actually, my question was about the theme theme of this novel. Uh, what do you see? Okay. One is one is there are two themes. One is the language. Yes, which sir. is talking about a connection to the society okay yes, yes and second is the alienation the total alienation of women that i told you through the characters even when, when i was telling about the characters i told you yes. and even uh, you know uh, how artwood has used you know the narrator's near constant feeling about the alienation of all the women Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, uh, I was just want to ask you the th same thing that it was the second uh, that uh, second point of this thing uh, theme is that the role of gender conflict uh, in the early period where uh, male was actually dominated, right? No, no. Where comes the gender conflict? What is sir, what is gender conflict? You want to say? I don't understand actually. Uh, sir, you say that uh, role of gender role. Okay, gender role in the sense ki, that means uh, here in this uh, novel, uh, the narrator is suffering so much. 
uh, and uh, uh, due to this uh, point of view like sometimes uh, uh, she is feeling very low uh, regarding this abortion and all the things that yeah, actually i am pointing about that point so whether it is indicating the role of gender role in the society what do you, what do you, okay okay you tell me what do you mean by alienation first tell me what do you mean by alienation in addition that means is separated or uh, cornered by the society yeah so uh, what is the uh, what is atwood trying to show uh, through her novel surfacing uh, how is she trying to show the woman uh, is alienated uh, see here so many characters you said that sir and uh, there is like uh, the narrator is uh, violated by uh, the so many characters means which characters are you talking about uh, mm, sir uh, the examples, yes. give me some examples that is what i'm asking you yes yes sir uh, actually i am uh, the, the role of gender role i am indicating about the fake husband that uh, uh, the narrator actually got pregnant and uh, also forced to have abortion right okay so you are talking about only the uh, you are talking about uh, the um, fake husband what about uh, you know she also got uh, you know married to someone yes yes right yeah you remember she got married yes sir you said she got married i just yeah. want to know yeah uh, I, actually, uh, I have to point out you know yeah you know who is joe 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 is the person that uh, uh, narrator is involved with ex lover narrator is involved what i think uh, joe in this book i was going through this and uh, yeah. at some point what i would suggest is if you uh, you know if you read and come before yes, that sir. then only you can you know you, your idea will be clear because whatever i am saying i am giving it in a very clear manner but you are not able to connect because you do not you have not read the novel yes sir i see that i didn't read yeah, it yeah that the problem is because you are because that is what it is you are getting confused with many things and yes, the confusion sir. is just because because you have not read the novel okay okay so, you read the novel yeah. yeah you read the novel then only it will be you know very clear that to understand uh, you know uh, about uh, the uh, um, uh, about the about what atwood has tried to you know reflect yes sir why yes. i was asking you because i wanted to know whether you you uh, you understand the basics or not you are asking this question it's okay yes. but then what you you do not you have you do not have a i brief idea about uh, what atwood is uh, you know the character so you just you know randomly you are trying to uh, you know uh, connect to uh, the theme but uh, the sir, theme is very really clear yes no sir actually i just want to clarify two things that the theme is connected with two points you said that two points first one and the second one i just want to ask you the second point is uh, indicating that role of gender role in the early period that is the only simple question no 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 when we are talking about you are asking about early period what do you mean by early period that is what i am asking you uh, what do you mean by early period nowadays uh, most of the women that have some rights and they are very liberal right now but in the early period they are very conserv conservative at that time so i was thinking about that no but here there is no such question of uh, uh, did i did i uh, reflect that uh, women were very conservative during that time no sir <laughs> no sir you are not uh, indicating about that i am just asking about the theme no, 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 no. Well, well, listen listen what what i am saying is when when the author has not you know the, you can write you think that it is uh, you know they, they were critical you can write in a critical analysis and you can you can try to justify through the text okay 
but here there is no mention about uh, that you see here men will uh, men has been reflected as as a character of cheating so that is what i said alienation of the woman that atwood is trying to show okay sir got it okay yes sir yeah uh, uh, see your question your your post of question saying that you know at the early uh, uh, period so uh, the early period has no reference uh, to atwood's uh, you know um, uh, text novel okay sir that means uh, the, uh, you said that alienation of the woman is the second point of the theme okay yeah that you. is but and why 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 alienation was uh, shown by atwood that is the same question sir actually i want to ask you that is the only thing so alienation was shown again i'm telling you that because she found the the men especially they were alienating because of the way they control the women with through religion through marriage through you know birth control through sex through language through birth all these you understand she tries to depict that men views relationship as a war okay the relationship is just like a war sir uh, i'm sorry if i'm interrupting in this connection yeah. uh, i have uh, a question based on previous years question papers should i reserve this question till yes. the end yes, or yes, can yes. i interrupt yes. now yes should i reserve it in the end sir or can i ask no, no, no. yeah you can ask uh sir it's related to theme only so i this question is asked in june 22 but i don't yeah. understand one uh, word called eco feminism so eco feminism and anti americanism are the major themes in atwood surfacing discuss sir i didn't understand this question at all eco feminism means eco so eco means uh, we talk about you know yes uh, the the uh, the the ecology okay is that i had some of your voice thanks to ecology, that segment eco, e ecology eco uh, okay. is ecology we need to okay uh -huh. yes. environment yes sir yeah yeah correct and so eco feminist you know thinkers uh, uh, so it is it is talking about uh, um um uh, the question was uh, yeah eco uh, feminist novel right yes sir uh, yeah so eco feminist you know thinkers they you know draw on the concept of uh, you know gender to analyze the relationship of the human and the you know and nature oh okay sir okay okay so because here gender has already been you know uh, you see how women ha are being uh, tormented am i clear yeah yes sir yes sir me uh -huh. see uh, wait if i find a paper yeah you can see yes also you can see you know the protagonist realizes that there is a gap between her natural self and her artificial self you know only when she encounters nature have uh, you have you read the text shridevi uh -huh, sir a little bit i have downloaded this one and i was going through and um, but sir i couldn't fully complete it i understand a bit but uh, even the ignore material okay, also I because you, i will i i will tell you i will tell you so basically yes, yes, if you talk about you know eco feminism is uh, basically a social movement you know claiming a considerable common ground between the environmentalism and feminism which you know some uh, current you know are uh, linking to you know the deep ecology and feminism so feminists uh, eco feminists they argue that the uh, that uh, you know important uh, experimental uh, theoretical and the linguistic parallel uh, these all you know exist between 
oppression and uh, subordination of women and nature in the west cultural tradition through the transformation of you know are uh, we can say differences in the into you know culturally constructed uh, conceptual binaries and the ideologies you know okay so uh, you find that beyond these nature the male and the female dualisms the eco feminists you know posts uh, that the western cosmology uh, in all the aspect uh, has perceived the reality so eco feminist also you know explore an intersectionality between sexism the you know the domination of uh, nature okay so you find that you know in in the novel uh, surfacing uh, you know outward presents the world that you know that oppresses or subjugates both femininity and nature she tries to you know prove that nature is an unavoidable uh, prerequisite for man's survival on earth and that the you know the modern scientific approach only you know Uh, serves to the distance man uh, from nature the ultimate and the inevitable con- consequences uh, of which uh, you know will be um, you can say the total extinction of human race itself so the narrator or the protagonist you see uh, or or the uh, surfacer makes a return to nature in order to retrieve her real self and has so far you know uh, been uh, suppressed by the uh, inconsistencies and the dualities of the patriarchal world so you find you know these are all bogged down uh, by a disastrous marriage and a traumatized you know a forced abortion uh, she returns you know to her native place in uh, in northern uh, quebec where she finds you know the countryside and the wilderness a, a welcome you know change for her uh, work day life so surfacing uh, you can see that is the story of a woman who goes in search of her missing father as i had told uh, while introducing so you see feminism you can see if we if i talk broadly um, you know Uh, analyzes why women is treated as a, as an inferior as inferior to men and when you say environmentalism or ecology in turn shows you know interest in detecting why nature is treated as inferior to culture okay so so you find so you find from the environmental movement ecofeminism derives the idea that all living organisms must be seen in relation to their natural surroundings and from this feminist you know movement ecofeminism takes an criticism on the gender roles uh, you can find uh, an an hierarchical dualism which uh, you know such as dominant subordinate or culture nature or men and women all these so eco feminists have explored the symbolic associations and the uh, devaluation of the woman and nature that appear in religion uh, in uh, uh, art in uh, theology uh, in literature so many ways so so some theorists have you know drawn specially on literature the revival of this woman nature symbolism connection clear getting it. yes sir getting it very nice sir. thank you really yeah. yes sir okay so let me come to the plot okay so coming to the plot uh, you find you know uh, the unnamed uh, uh, narrator returns to you know uh, quebec and after years of absence to search for her missing father and she brings her boyfriend joe and a married couple anna and david on the way to village uh, near her father's island find the narrator visits her father's friend paul 
and Paul can, you know, provide no in, new information on how to locate the narrator's father. So a guide named Evans, Evans, you know, takes the narrator and her companions uh, to her father's island, where the narrator searches for clues regarding her father's disappearance. And she becomes, you know, convinced that her father has gone mad and is still alive, okay? So then what happens is the narrator, you know, works in spruits on her, you know, freelance job, illustrating a book on fairy tales. But her worries, you know, prevent her from accomplishing any uh, real uh, work. So David, you know, proposes uh, staying on the island for a week. And you find the narrator agrees uh, uh, though she, you know, uh, she secretly fears that her praised father uh, re-emerges. So during uh, their stay, uh, David, you know, launches uh, constant insult at uh, Anna, couching them as jokers, and uh, uh, and then Anna, you know, confesses the narrator that the David, that David is a womanizer and. She complains that David constantly, you know, demands that Anna uh, wear, you know, makeup. So the four of them, you know, they go on a blueberry picking expedition, and uh, they, uh, you know, they go to a near nearby island where Joe unexpectedly proposes to the narrator, and the narrator refuses Joe, telling him how, you know, she left her last uh, husband and uh, child. And back on the island, you find uh, Paul arrives with an American named uh, Malmstrom. So Malmstrom, you know, claims to be uh, uh, from, a, you know, Detroit Wildlife Agency. And he offers to purchase the island, but the narrator refuses. So she pulls Paul aside and tells him that her father is still alive. And Paul seems, you know, very skeptical about it. So after the visitor leaves, you know, David offhandedly accuses Malmstrom of being a CIA, CIA operative who is, uh, you know, organizing an American invasion of Canada. So later you find the narrator, you know, looks through her father's records and conse consequently, you know, believes that he is likely dead. So she sees that uh, he had, you know, been researching uh, Indian uh, wall paintings and that, uh, you know, he had marked several sites on the map and she decides to visit a site. So you find later the narrator convinces her friends to accompany her on a camping trip to see the wall paintings. And on their way to the campsite, they see a decomposing blue heron that has been hanged from a tree. So David here insists on filming the dead heron. Uh, you understand what is a heron? Hello? What is the heron? Do you understand? Heron is a bird. Yes, sir. Am I, hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you are audible. Yes, yes. Heron is a you know bird. A, basically, it's a uh, it's a blue. It was a blue bird. So David, you know, uh, was insisting to make a film uh, on the dead heron. And um, 
he is making uh, that called you know random samples so the heron's death haunts the narrator you know she uh, sees evidences of two campers entering the area beforehand and she quickly assumes that uh, they are americans and to blame for the crime okay Uh, just a minute, just hold on for a minute. Yeah, and then you find the herons. Uh, so, so she's uh, putting, you know, responsible these Americans. So, meanwhile, you find the four companions set up a camp. And who are the four companions? Supriya? Yes, sir. Who are the four companions? I told you uh, the four companions with the narrator. Uh, four companions Anna, Joe, Paul, and David. Anna, Joe, Paul, David. No, it's the narrator, Anna, Joe, and Dave, uh, and uh, David. Yes. 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 Yeah. So then, what happened is you find Anna, you know, tells the narrator that she has forgotten her makeup, and David will punish her. So the narrator goes, you know, fishing with uh, David and Joe, and they encounter the American. And the narrator notices that an American flag on their boat. So the narrator you know, brings her companions to a site from her father's map. There, but there are no walls, no wall paintings. So they're very frustrated and confused. They, stay, they return to the camp. On the way, they again encountered the American campers. So the narrator is very surprised to discover that the campers are actually Canadian. And what uh, she had thought was America was an American flag is actually a sticker. Okay, it was not a flag, it was just a sticker. However, you find the narrator claims that the campers are still Americans because the slaughter of the heron is a distinctly American action. Okay, the killing of that heron. And then the four, you know, they return to the cabin. The narrator, you know, locates another site on her father's map, but realizes that the government has raised, you know, the water level in the part of the lake. And she will have to dive to see the paintings. So outside, you find the narrator observes David tormenting, you know, Anna by insisting that she take off her clothes for random samples. And Anna is eventually, you know, relents, but uh, that 
and then feels humiliated. And the narrator asks David why he tortures Dana. And David, you know, claims that he does not, he does show because Anna cheats on him. Okay, so this is what David thinks. So then the narrator, you know, uh, channels to the side for, from her father's mask and she dies repeatedly in search of the painting. On a particular uh, deep, deep dive, she sees a disturbing object and screams and swims for the surface. And Joe has followed her onto the lake and demand uh, to know what she is doing. So she ignores you know, Joe and realizes that uh, what she saw was a dead child. Okay, she saw a dead child. Clear. And then she believes that it, it is to be, you know, her aborted baby. She uh, changes her story from leaving her husband and child to having an affair with her art professor and being, you know, forced to be to abort the their baby. So then, what happens is the narrator visions, you know throws her into psychosis. What is psychosis? Yes, anyone? What is psychosis? Uh, sir, who can predict? Something. Sorry, sorry. Uh, who have some uh, magical power or uh, some uh, internal power to predict hmm. something? No, psychosis is a mental disorder. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. So the collection of symptoms that uh, affect the mind uh, is psychosis? Yes, yes, correct, correct. Okay, so the narrator's vision, you know, throws her into uh, psychosis and um, she believes that her father had found scared Indian sites and, uh, you know, resolved to thank the gods for granting her the power, you know. And Joe, you know, tries to speak to the narrator, but she remains uh, impenetrable and he tries to rape her, but he leaves her alone once she warns him that she will get pregnant. Later what happens, David tries to seduce the narrator, telling her that Joe and Anna are having sex. Okay. So he is trying to, you know, Anna's husband is trying to seduce the narrator. And you find the narrator nevertheless resists, you know, David's advances. And a police boat, you know, comes to the island. And David tells the narrator that the police have found her bo father's body. Deep in her madness, the narrator refuses to believe David. And that night, she seduces Joe so she can get pregnant. Okay. And she feels that a new child will replace her old baby, her lo old or lost baby. And Joe falsely, you know, believes that the Narrator has forgotten him for cheating on her. 
and on the last day you find on the island the narrator abandons her friends she destroys david's film and escapes in a canoe and the narrator's companions search you know in vain for her eventually leaving the island and alone on the island the narrator falls deeper into madness and she destroys the art from her job and nearly everything inside the cabin and she becomes an animal you know running around naked eating unwashed plants and living in a burrow then what happens she imagines raising her baby outdoor and never you know teaching it uh, language she also has visions of her parents she could recall that eventually you know hunger and exhaustion brings the narrator to sanity and she looks at herself in the mirror and sees just a natural woman okay her self realization and she and she you know resolves not to feel you know powerless anymore and then you find paul arrives at the island with joe and the narrator realizes that she loves jo and resolves to reunite with him so she pauses in the cabin looking out at jo wait so this is the uh, plot of uh, surface any questions shudhav did you get me i was uh, sir yes sir there is also like sir um, one more thing uh, mm -hmm. so i mean when we are writing suppose a question uh, uh, occurs on the main character of this uh, novel surfacing so i mean what what all i mean these points now what we have discussed will come come along sir like we should reflect all this yeah it will come because when you are talking about the protagonist uh, then uh, you have to write about highlighting the narrator's uh, you know relationship with the others and how uh, artwork has presented the narrator you know the narrator yes in various ways you know the narrator as a woman uh the narrator as the relationship of the narrator with jo and the the relationship of the narrator with the the friends you know anna david and jo then the search of for you know her father so you have to particularly talk about it each uh, headings you have to talk about only that instance sure yes. sir sir so what people generally do is when they are writing answers they just write the plot if you write the plot you are not going to get good marks you have to understand what the question is asking and accordingly you need to relate your text to the what the question is asking people you know any question they start writing the novel the plot plot if you write you will not get good marks yes sir yes sir yes supriya any questions uh Sir, uh, there is you one previous your question. I want to ask you regarding this uh, novel. Uh, yes. If you allow me. 
Mela, sorry. Yeah, sir, here is the question is the nameless heroine coming home is an attempt to associate the self with nature. Discuss with reference to surfacing. Sir, in this question, self how do you start our answer? Self with nature, I told you how it, it has been compared. Female has been compared with nature. Yes. So that you have to write. Okay. The, uh, feminism, the equal feminism that I told, uh, I answered uh, Shridevi, the same. Oh. Yes, sir. What about the others? The others are not asking. Are you listening or uh, Bhagyashree? Yes, sir. You don't have any doubts, huh? You have understood everything? Chavi? Yes, sir. Chavi, Chavi do you have any questions, any doubts? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Sir, there is another previous question here. It is asking that structurally, mm -hmm. okay. yeah. structurally, what are the three broad sections into which surfacing can be divided? Sir, in this question, how we will write that, uh, how we will divide the broad sections? Okay. Broad sections. Okay. Sudhavi, so, you would like to answer this question? Uh, so actually, I myself wanted to ask, maybe it's about characterization and uh, it's like about the themes and uh, like, you know, and also about... No, 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 Okay. Three, it is asking about, uh, what is the question read again? Structurally, what are the three broad sections? That is Structurally, structure means it is asking about the, the plot. You know how you can uh, talk about the plot uh, structure means the structure is the plot. How the story develops is it that is asking? Yes, yes, oh, okay, yes. okay, okay, okay. So structurally, structurally, uh, what can you? Uh, how can you divide? The first phase, you can talk about the passive passivity and the oppression um, speculism. The second phase, you can talk about the second part you can talk about is the phase of self-reflection and the identification. And the third, you can talk about the phase of consolation and acceptance. So you have to give here the examples from the text. Sir, please do not mind. Just uh, little. So can you just one second? If you can, just three, three, all the three. Can you just write? Okay, so the first are... one. Yes, the sir. first one is, uh, you know, uh, being passive and oppressive. Yes. Sir. Second is uh, the. Uh, the the self reflection yes sir and or the or you can say the identification of an individual okay yes sir and the third is consolation and consolation Cons and, and 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 you know accepting the things Yes, sir. Got it, sir. Yes, sir. So, Priya, did you get? 
Yes, sir. I understood, sir. Yeah. This is Jassia today. Jassia, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, this is your first class? Yeah, this is my first class. Okay, and you're from? Uh, Kerala. Kerala, okay. okay. I think you, you joined in the... Uh, in the uh, in the introduction block one when i was doing did no. you join no oh. uh, i was knowing about this class just now so i just uh okay. so i just want okay. to know how it goes and yeah it was nice yeah uh so you have taken canadian literature right yeah okay so uh, any more questions or shall we end the class Uh, so just uh, one one more second, sir. We are trying to explore more questions from the other thing so that. Um, yeah, please, uh, what uh, what I would uh, request you to you know keep it beforehand. Uh, the, you know uh, the class commences. Yes, sir. yes. Sir. Okay, yeah, sir. and uh, or or we have the group. You can put those questions in the group. You know. Uh, sir, what we'll do is when we are reading again and again, sir, any questions occurs, then we'll share in the group. Yeah, so you, can, you, can, you can put it in the group and, uh, you know, sir. maybe uh, once we finish this class also, still if, if you have any questions, you accumulate all the questions and then I will, I will share a link and then we can discuss over that. Yes, sir. I mean, maybe in the group itself. WhatsApp group, we can, we can continue WhatsApp group, sir. That, uh, yes, yes, sir. yes. Uh, sir, tomorrow you'll be doing the fourth one, the tin flute? Yeah, uh, yeah, the next one, yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Supriya, do we have any more questions? Sir, it is also about the theme. There is one question. It is in the previous year question. Uh, it is saying that coming home to nature by the nameless heroine is a central theme of surfacing discuss. So the same thing which you uh, yeah the same the thing the, as a long question which was there now they have just put that as a uh, theme. Yes, sir. I got it. Thank you, sir. Chavi, Bhagyashri, Jasiya, any questions? No, sir. No. Okay. Okay, then, uh, so we call off the day then, and uh, we meet again tomorrow. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank yes, you, sir. Thank uh, you so much. Okay, one more thing I just wanted to tell you. Uh, tomorrow, uh, uh, by any chance, if I'm not able to do the class, I will let you know in the group. Uh, all of you are there in the group. Yes, sir. I joined the group. Jesse, are you there? Are you? I, I'm sure you mustn't be there. No, I'm not there. Okay, I'm giving uh, you the. I'm giving you you the I, I got to know about this class through MEG course. MEG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm not in any you, group. Okay, okay. I'm just uh, sending you the group link. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, can you please join? I've sent in the message yeah, box. Sure. Okay. So, uh, if suppose tomorrow I will, uh, tomorrow and day after, I think I'm, I'm a little confused whether I can take tomorrow and day after. Because there's some problem with the, you know, um, the electricity, it is, they, they're working on the electricity and the, uh, we are not having current for more than, you know, um, say 10 hours or something like that. So if, suppose I'm not able to take tomorrow and day after, I will let you know in the group, but I'll adjust those classes on Saturday and Sunday because Saturday, Sunday, we don't have classes generally. So I will adjust those on Saturday and Sunday, okay? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, hello. Hello, sir. Sir, yeah. um, uh, I have a small request for you. Uh, for uh, for a Saturday and Sunday, 
uh, is it possible to change the timing like four to five, uh, four to six, or what? Uh, yeah, that, that we can do. That's not a problem. Uh, I will discuss. No, uh, for tomorrow, if uh, if not uh, this time, can we do it little uh, uh, little late? Little late. I mean to say at around uh, say eight thirty to do ten thirty. Is it? Will it be good for all of you? Yes, sir. Uh, for to, for tomorrow, because uh, you know, I um, I want to finish this as soon as possible. I don't want to uh, you know miss a class. But tomorrow, uh, is it possible if I reschedule the class to eight thirty? No, sir. Uh, who is it, Chavi? Chavi, what's your problem? Sir, I will not be able to take. Uh, okay. Um. Okay then. So. And tomorrow, um, can we do it uh, in the morning? Is it okay with all of you if we have uh, in the morning? Uh, sir, morning I will be at my school, sir. Sir, I'm actually. Hey, what teacher. what time? What time? What time do you have your school? Uh, sir, from morning six thirty to twelve. Oh, six thirty to twelve. When I when is your school? Uh, I think your schools are now uh, closed, no? Sir, yes, sir. Uh, for a summer camp, actually, our school is scheduling, so that's why actually we have to available at our school. Okay. That's why, you are working in which school? So, are you working in which school? Sorry. Uh, sir, I I am working as a teacher for class six, class uh, class five, class six. No, no, which in school? Which school? Hello. Yes, sir. No, no. I said uh, you are working in which school? Sir, it's a uh, uh, public school uh, in uh, Jharsuguda. Actually, I am living in Jharsuguda. So it's oh, a you went from Jharsuguda. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. I thought you are in Bhubaneswar. Okay. No, sir. I live in Jharsuguda. Okay, okay. Okay, so. I don't know. I'm because uh, Chavi is having problem. Chavi, um, what time is comfortable? Apart from six to eight. Chavi, can you hear me? Four to six. No, four to six is not a good time for me. Uh, so, since we, I think most of us are working daytime, uh, before yeah. six o'clock is very difficult. So, yeah, six yeah. also, so I actually am exactly off. I'm making work the and out. Yeah, yeah. The, exactly for me also because I'm also working. So. I have. I, uh, ideally, university. we can shift this to Saturday. Saturday six um, uh, afternoon six. What time? In case we can't make it tomorrow, I think half of us then can't. Saturday, make it. Uh, I will request the regional center to reschedule it to Saturday, uh, maybe two twice. You know, morning uh, morning we can have uh, uh, one class and evening again one class because I want sure. to finish it by Monday because I do I don't want to take it to Tuesday Wednesday because I have. Uh, I have some, uh, uh, you know, my 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 students have their uh, uh, you know thesis to be submitted. So uh, I will request the regional center to make it to uh, you know uh, Saturday two classes. Let me talk sir, to them. Sir, is it also possible, like maybe one hour tomorrow for ev at everyone's convenience and Saturday one hour, <clears throat> if it's possible? I don't know. It's too much. Seven to eight. No, uh, tomorrow, sorry. Eight. Eight to nine because eight thirty to ten thirty seems to yeah, be too no, late. No, 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 no. See, eight thirty uh, because uh, uh, tomorrow I have some uh, you know assignment. 
uh, by the time I return, it will be 8.30. Means by 8.15, I'll be there. So uh, I can't come before 8. So that is the problem. Uh, so I was, uh, that is what I was asking if 8.30 to 9.30 also at least one hour we can do. Yes, sir. At that time will be okay. 8.30 to 9.30. No, but Chavi, Chavi, what about you? Can you, 8.30 to 9.30 is okay for you? Yes, sir. Okay, so then tomorrow we do it at 8.30 to 9.00, okay? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, 8.30 to 9.30. I'll talk to the regional center. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Thank sir. you, everyone. Okay. Good night. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir.